It's coming home. Is it though? England beat Serbia 1-0 thanks to Jude Bellingham, who's been given man of the match, I think. Um, it's a no-brainer. He was going to get it anyway. We need to talk about Bellingham and the press. Like, it's it's about time. We need to address it. But England, 1-0 win. You take it. Serbia is a very, was going to be a very tricky uh, opponent to face, very tricky opposition because they have the two big men up front with Vlahovic and Mitrovic. I said it in the prediction that Sabia has to get those two ticking, right? Because by having the two of them, you sacrifice mobility with your press. Mitrovic has never been one to press hard at the front. He will press once and then that's it, or press once, twice, and that's it. He will not press on the second, third phase of play. So that part of your game becomes unexistent, which means you have to drop, right? Um, and you give, you sacrifice that. You sacrifice the press knowing that they're going to cause tr- trouble for the English defense. But they didn't do that. They didn't cause trouble. They really struggled to get him into the game. Um, every time he got the ball, he found himself isolated. Vlahovic was trying to really play as a midfielder where he's trying to support him, but at the same time uh, be a threat, but at the same time also defend. He tried. He, he saw that he did badly. He did well. Um, even the goal that came in, that, that had nothing to do with him. But I think he did, defended well when he needed to. The only thing is now they were not pressing as a unit, which means that phase, that 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 phase of their of their game plan, um, or rather, yeah, that part of their game plan of having two people to bother the English defense was not working. And what you gave up is that you couldn't press. And now that also is not working because now you're being pushed back. So you are losing on both situations. And I think that at some point, uh, we did a live on Twitch, uh, X, YouTube, and TikTok. And I said that it's about time they need to make a sub. And then someone else in the in the comment section was like, I think Mitrovic will be the first to come off, which, um, sorry, Vlahovic will be the first to come off. I thought Mitrovic would be the first one to come off simply because he's immobile. But again, he's like a form four. He's not going to be dropped. You know, um, you're the oldest, you're, you are the captain and all, all that stuff. Like, it's not going to be dropped. And I feel like when Jovic came on, he really changed the game. For England, the threat on the wing, Saka, again, this just proves that he's a he's he's their best right winger. Yes, I'm an Arsenal fan. I could be biased, but he's their best winger because every time he had the beating of of their left back, of their left winger, they played with the back three, and that's the same side where so Pavlovic and Lukic would come and support. Lukic would drop to support him and Kostic as well. Kostic went off. He got injured, and Mladenovic came on in the forty something minute. I think forty second or something like that. But Saka had the beating every single time. The thing is, Walker and Saka have a weird partnership. Like it just works. That's the thing, right? And I think I know why. My theory is, Saka and Walker come in come from. Um, they play in clubs where the right back is more or less asked to do the same thing. So Kyle Walker knows exactly what he needs to do in terms of his movement for his right winger. And Saka knows the types of runs this guy will be making and he knows he'll be staying there a bit more. And Walker is also used to passing to a winger who's receiving the ball with his body to the touchline. So he's receiving the ball as he's running towards the middle of the field, which is basically how Pep and Ateta play. That is just bare minimum. If you're a winger at Arsenal, you do not receive the ball with your back facing the opponent's goal. Your back is facing the touchline. That way, you have space to... You can run into space and you can see where you're going. So, even though Southgate, that may not be his game plan, if they find themselves in that situation, they used, they get they got out of it really quickly. You know, that's just because there's chemistry because the two of them play in similar systems. It's inadvertent chemistry, right? In my opinion. And even when Walker has the ball, Saka knows when to make that run. Very similar. The way those two were playing just reminded me of Ben White and Saka on that wing. Or reminded me of Walker and Mares, you know, or something like that. Like, you can just see how there was synergy. Because they know they, they know how each other play. And they've been playing the same way the whole season. So, um, even before the goal, there was, a, there, was a, there was a time when Walker went to the... They played like a one-two, and Saka just knew exactly when to go, and Walker put him through. Then, obviously, the ball over the top went to Saka, and he was in again. Again, the goal also came from that wing. To be honest, this, the cross was not great at all, but the deflection just made it into a perfect cross. And, yeah, Saka was really good on that wing. On the other side, 
Foden is being asked to play more of like you drop back and then Trippier makes that run. The problem is Trippier is not naturally left-footed and the positions in which he was finding himself is that he 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 finds in a, he finds himself in a place where that first time left-footed cross is the first thing you can do. And you see if it doesn't come naturally to you, you lose that, you know. Again, this is just a result of Southgate. How how do you select this team? Like you need at least one left-footed um defender considering how you play because you are asking your fullback your left footback to go to go beyond the left winger and cross the ball but if he's not left footed then you should know as a coach to for my game plan to work i need a left footed left back you know that is where luke shaw comes in but luke shaw is not fit so you need to get a second one but anyway, enough about um, Southgate. We just have to see. Now it's too late. There's nothing we can do. We just have to see how he gets gets into it. Um, in terms of Southgate and his performance, I feel like it was a typical Southgate performance. Like there is nothing to write home about. There's nothing bad to really say about it. Even when he made the changes, there were predictable changes. On the live, on the stream, basically, I said the first person to come off the bench is going to be Gallagher. And it's probably going to be Trent because he's going to look for that. The first thing he's going to look for when he's just one year up is the defensive solidity. Because by bringing Trent in, he's gone away from it. You see, he's used to playing Declan Rice and Calvin Phillips in the middle or Henderson and someone. And for him to play Trent, is he's, he's, he's like not playing the way he's used to. So... The first moment he gets to revert back to settings, he will do it. At 1-0 up against a Serbia team with like 22 minutes to go, that was the most obvious sub to me, right? And it ended up happening. Trent Alexander-Arnold. Um, there are moments where Trent is really good going forward. Uh, defensively, I wouldn't say he was exposed. The only thing is there are certain instincts that a midfielder has. When I'm in space, when I receive the ball and my back is facing an opponent that's pressing. There's an instinct that I have just to pass it back. I'm not going to try and make a fast touch if my if I know I'm in a, I'm going to put my team under pressure. And there was a very good chance that Mitrovic had that was created that way. Ball came into Trent. He was almost on the on the so like if looking at his goal, he was like on the right side. So he had gone to cover for Rice on that side. And his first touch was so bad the ball the ball went to Mitrovic. Mitrovic shot went wide. And it's in those moments where you're like, okay, it's those instincts are not there. They're not natural instincts. Trippier getting the ball on his left foot and instead of putting a cross first time with his left foot, the instinct is not there. He's not left-footed. Trent is not a midfielder, right? Um, I'm not saying he can't do well there. It's just that there has to be some time to get used to it in that position. Um, Kane was quiet. There, was a lot of, there were a lot of passengers in this team. I wouldn't say anyone particularly played badly, but they were just passengers. To me, Kane was just a passenger. Bellingham did so well to get into that position and actually head the ball in. You could tell that they were just targeting him. Um, I, I wouldn't call him a passenger. He was way, way above a passenger. He was quite dynamic in his movement um, and was not scared to receive the ball. I think that's just that confidence that you have. The guy has just won a Champions League. Like he's, he's now at the top of the world. You know, there's that confidence that he's exuding. Yeah, um, Bellingham was was all right. Like nothing, nothing... Um, he, I, he was, I think he was, he was still England's best player, but he was the best player in a performance that wasn't great. It was just a Southgate performance just there. Um, who else am I going to talk about? Uh, Gwehi looked really good. I liked Gwehi. Um, Stones, again, just calm as usual. Just Stones is just... I, this guy has just grown to be such a professional. Like He's just someone who will give you 7 out of 10 every week, you know? And, I mean, that's the least you can ask for. Whereas um, Gallagher came off the bench, I think, uh, and Mino as well came off the bench. I was quite excited for Kobe Mino. Shout out to Kobe Mino, by the way. Kobe! We need to give a shout out to Kobe Mino for actually just just, just being a baller. <laughs> um, yeah, and that was it. Game ended 1-0. Uh, oh yeah, let me talk a bit about Sabia. I think they can really cause teams trouble. When they brought in Jovic and Tadic, the game just changed. To be honest, the game changed. They just started pressuring the team even more. England started falling back. England just started accepting the pressure. Um, Tadic is now like, Tadic is an older statesman, right? The man was captain of Ajax and now he's at Fanabache. Like, the, he's, he has played he has played defensive football. He has played attacking football. He's also Southampton. Like, he's played all sorts of football. He's, 
he's just a smart footballer. So when he came on, things, everything changed. Jovic, in as much as he's also a striker, by taking off Vlahovic, the Bruton striker, but he's more mobile. He had a, one good chance where the ball was played into him and he just uh, shot it wide. Then uh, Milinkovic Savic, I think, in the first half was quite quiet. Um, second half, he was much better, but it was almost a story of a little bit, little bit too late. The other person that was really solid for me, I guess, would be uh, uh, who else came on that really impressed me? Um, yeah, I think that's it. It was just Tadic and Jovic. Like when they came in, they just really gave them impetus. And I think that's just the plan going forward. Either you bring them off the bench against smaller teams, playing the two big men up front, it's going to work, right? Vlahovic and and uh, Mitrovic. But yeah, Tadic needs to start this game. Because I feel like if they, if they put pressure on this team from the get-go and you have to force England to attack, you put them under a lot of pressure. But I mean, it's a solid. It's a solid. It was. A, it was a solid. It was an okay performance. Uh, for England, the defense was solid performance. Average from like the midfield, a bit better from the attack. It's one nil against a very plucky opponent. You have a lot of injuries as well to contend with. So to me, this is a good win for England. It's not flashy. It's not great, um, but it's a win, and you will take them as they come. So yeah, England moves to the top of the table in Group C.